I think what most people miss about leadership is that it's a brain function. Mm. So when you think of where leadership starts, um, it's your brain or where leadership education should start, it should start with the brain. Where does happiness start? Because ultimately we want to be leaders to be happier and help other people be happier. Where does a healthy body start? Because if you don't have a healthy body, you can't be a great leader. It's a very important point. Uh, We'll actually talk as your weight goes up, the size and function of your brain goes down. So being healthy is important. But where does healthy start? Starts in your brain. Well, what about relationships? Again, they start in your brain. That's where you fall in love, stay in love, or make bonehead decisions that get you out of love. And so, um, you know, I've just been thinking about Muhammad Ali a lot this week because I think he was my first Olympian that I got to scan. But ultimately your brain is involved in everything you do and everything you are, including being a leader. It's just so clear after looking at all these scans that when your brain works right, you work right. And when it's troubled, you have trouble in your life. So when people think of troubled leadership, we need to start thinking, I wonder what's going on in their brain. So healthy brain, happier, healthier, wealthier, more successful, you're a better leader. And when your brain is not healthy, sadder, sicker, poor, less successful, often because you make poor decisions and you're not a good leader. Um, And so, you know, I often say um, in the 1960s, space was the new frontier Uh, clearly now in 21 it's the space between your ears and with my ears you could call me spock uh for the brain that's funny spock for the brain except i can't do this so maybe not so why is the brain the next frontier because they run the world they run the stock market the local market huge corporations Mom and pop shops down the street, brains run governments, although probably not that well. Um, Schools, this is our program in uh, the Fraser Academy in Vancouver, Canada. Brains run churches. Uh, Pastor Rick Warren and I have had a collaboration um, well over a decade now. Brains run families. These are two of my grandbabies and you, but most people rarely think about their brains, which is a huge mistake because success in anything you do starts with a healthy brain. So your competitive advantage or your disadvantage as a leader is the actual physical functioning of your brain. So in thinking about this talk, I've actually been thinking of writing a book on the neuroscience of leadership. Um, I just want to talk about really simple ideas. And number one is your brain is the most complicated organ in the universe. There's nothing as complex as the human brain. Nothing. It's estimated we have 100 billion nerve cells. Um, Each cell in your brain is connected to other cells by up to 10,000 individual connections. I mean, if you really think about that, it's going to blow your mind. Your brain is actually more complicated than any computer that we have developed so far. Um, You have more connections in your brain than there are stars in the universe. And even though your brain is only 2% of your body's weight, about three pounds, uses 20 to 30% of the calories you consume. And so if your brain is involved in everything you do and everything you are, it just becomes critical to love it 
and take care of it. And nobody loves their brain. Why? Because you can't see it. You can see the wrinkles in your skin or the fat around your belly, and you can do something when you're unhappy with that. But because people don't look at their brain, they just don't care. In talking about leadership, it's just absolutely essential to talk about the leader part of your brain. There's a specific part of your brain called the prefrontal cortex. And um, it's called the executive part of the brain or the CEO. So this is very important. How many of you have children? Well, I have four. And odds are, if they're like mine, mine are from 17 to 44, my goodness, um, they make better decisions starting at around 24, 25, 26, because the front part of their brain, the executive part of the brain, call it the prefrontal cortex, becomes myelinated. It actually, you are not an adult, not until you're about 25 and more likely 25 in girls and 27 or 28 in boys, because that's when your brain finishes development. This is why you should not be smoking pot as a teenager or a young adult. I'm actually not a fan of it at any age, but it delays development. Um, this is why bad food and alcohol um, decrease the development of the brain. So when we're babies, the back part of our brain becomes myelinated. And just so you know, this process, it's where your nerve cells get insulated. They actually get wrapped with a white fatty substance called myelin and it helps your brain work faster, work more efficiently. And when we scan little kids, they have super busy brains, but as they age, they settle down because they're more efficient. And this is why if you want to be a good leader of your family, you have to model but also protect developing brains. And it's just no surprise to me that Simone Biles and some of the other Olympians struggle with their mental health. Think of the traumatic brain injuries she must have had learning how to do those insanely dangerous uh, gymnastic moves. Not good for developing brains. Oh, by the way, fame is terrible for developing brains. Fame has side effects. Uh, mostly it wears out the judgment center of your brain and it wears out the pleasure centers, making these kids more vulnerable to anxiety and depression. So there's this part of your brain called the prefrontal cortex, the front third of your brain, largest in humans and any other animal. It's estimated to be 30% of the human brain, 11% um, of the chimpanzee brain, 7% of your dog's brain, unless you're Frasier. Uh, Frasier was my bulldog. I'm certain it was no more than 5% with the decisions he made, 3% uh, of the cat's brain, and 1% of the mouse's brain, um, which is why cats need nine lives and mice get eaten by cats. I am so excited to be part of Growth Day. When it comes to your life, I always think of people in four big circles that you have a biology. So the physical functioning of your brain and your body, it's critical. Your brain is soft about the consistency of soft butter. Your skull is really hard and has sharp bony ridges. So we have to protect it. And then there's the psychological circle, which is how we think but there's also a social circle, how we get along with other people. 
and a spiritual circle, which is why do you care? What is your deepest sense of meaning and purpose? And trouble in your life can happen in any or all of the circles and optimization, which we're gonna talk about today, happens in all of the circles. So what I'm gonna to do today though, is I wanna talk about, cause this is about mindset, the psychological circle. And this information comes from my new book, Your Brain is Always Listening. And, uh, but I actually wanna go back a decade. Um, and I was, I just finished another book of mine, Change Your Brain, Change Your Body. And it was a Sunday morning and I was really happy because I'd finished the book and I've written a lot of books, but you know, they take a lot of effort. And we were going to church and I just remember how happy I felt. And then as we got to church, we go to this big church in Newport Beach where I live. And I told Tana, my wife, why don't you drop Chloe off at Children's Church and I'll go save us seats. And as I walked toward the sanctuary, I saw hundreds of donuts for sale. And I've been going to church since I was four years old, but today it pissed me off. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to church to get my soul fed. These people are trying to kill me because there's not one healthy thing about donuts. And then right around the corner is bacon and sausage. These are actual pictures from that day because I was so irritated. Uh, and I just felt like I got hit in the stomach repeatedly. And before I walked into the sanctuary, I saw them cooking hundreds of hot dogs for after church. And I'm so upset. And then when I sat down, the minister started talking about the ice cream festival they had the night before. And I, I just can't tell you how unhappy I was because I'm going to church to get my soul fed. And when my wife found me in church, I'm typing on my phone and she hates that. Uh, she gave me that look that only my wife is allowed to give me. There's not one other person I would take that look from. But she gave me that look like, why are you doing that in church? Don't you know you're going to hell? <laughs> and so I showed her what I was writing. Go to church and get donuts, bacon, sausage, hot dogs, ice cream. They have no idea they are sending people to heaven early. Save them, then kill them. This is not the plan. And I remember that Sunday morning, I have no idea what the minister said. I just prayed that God would use me to change the culture of food at church. And it was fervent, but during the prayer, my mind, because your mind's always messing, with you, my mind went, oh great, how's that going to happen? You're a psychiatrist, you look at people's brains, you have no connection to changing the culture of food at church. But as you'll get to know me during this talk, I sort of have an attitude problem. And I'm like, well, that's my prayer, deal with it or not. And no lie. Two weeks later, Pastor Rick Warren called me from Saddleback Church. Some of you may know Pastor Warren. Uh, he's the author of our generation's best-selling book, The Purpose Driven Life, sold more than 50 million copies. And he's the senior pastor at Saddleback Church with um, 20 locations around the world including a very large online present. And he called me up and he said, Dr. Amen, I've seen your work on public television. I'm fat, my church is fat, will you help me? 
and I laughed and I said, you have me from hello, uh, knowing the prayer that I had prayed two weeks earlier. Um, it was a very special moment. And so Pastor Warren, Dr. Mark Hyman and I created something called the Daniel Plan, which was to get the world healthy through religious and community based organizations. The first week, January 15, 2011, 15,000 people signed up. The first year, they lost a quarter of a million pounds. And they reported things like better energy, focus, creativity, sleep and mood, reductions in stress, blood pressure, blood sugar, sexual dysfunction, and many medications. The program has now been done in thousands of churches, communities, synagogues, temples, mosques worldwide. And it's based on five pillars, faith, which is why do you care? That's our spiritual circle. Food and fitness, our biological circle. Friends, which is our social circle and focus. Where you bring your mind always determines how you feel, where you bring your attention, where you bring your focus, always determines how you feel. But let's make no mistake, you are in a war for the health of your brain and body. Everywhere you go, someone's trying to sell you bad food that will kill you early. I often say the real weapons of mass destruction, ISIS, that you hardly ever hear about anymore, has nothing on our food industry. The real weapons of mass destruction, highly processed, pesticide sprayed, high glycemic, which means it raises your blood sugar quickly, low fiber food-like substances stored in plastic containers. And the food industry uses neuroscience tricks to hook your pleasure centers and addict you to bad food. So for example, this is Catherine Webb, a incredibly stunningly beautiful uh, model um, who's eating a cheeseburger for Carl's Jr. You know, she would not have this body if she ate that food on a regular basis. Our social media apps are created to be addictive, to steal your attention. As the food industries go for stomach share, Facebook and Instagram and Google and uh, so on, they're going for mind share. And how long can they keep you on these apps? In addition, the news is no longer the news because it is made for marketing and it keeps your eyeballs there longer if they scare you. Um, and it's just so clear uh, during the pandemic. When my wife would turn on the news, she'd be angry and anxious. And when she turned off the news, she was just much more normal, more herself. This is one of my favorite topics we're in trouble as a society. So we need to understand what our brain is listening to and change it. So I wanted to start with a story. Um, I have been blessed this year. Dr. Phil really understands my work. I've been on his show seven times this season. And uh, he says, if you don't understand the brain, you don't understand the person. Well, uh, about a decade ago, we did a show together on compulsive cheaters. And um, Jose had cheated on his wife eight times in four years that we know about. And his wife had a gun and she was going to shoot him. And it was perfect for Dr. Phil. And when I scanned Jose, this is a SPECT scan. SPECT is the study we do at Amon Clinics. He's got low activity in the front part of his brain. So this is a big part 
of the focus area of your brain and those holes means he's got really sleepy frontal lobes. So he's easily distracted, disorganized, short attention span. And he was excitement seeking. And for whatever reason, Jose and I, we really came to love each other. And he did everything I asked him to do. I love that because it works. What we did was we got very clear on his goals, um, but not work relationships. What do you want? He wanted to be married because he didn't want his daughter growing up in a broken home like he did um, with work. And he was working in a tattoo parlor. Um, he wanted to be better um, with his money. There's always a problem with his physical, emotional, spiritual health. So we do goal setting in the four big circles of your life your brain, your mind, your relationships, and your soul. Why do you care? And then I taught him these two words. These are the most important two words in the English language when it comes to your health. Then what? If I do this, then what happens? If I say this, then what happens? And then we worked on all 12 of the steps. Um, so that was his scan before. Seven months later, his brain was better. He hasn't cheated since, we're at a decade. And oh, by the way, he went to nursing school, then he went to nurse anesthetist school, and he's making like 200 grand a year. And his children are not being raised in a broken home, which is his goal. So step one, you gotta know your goals. But too often people think of this as work related and I'm like, no, that's how you burn out. They need to be relationships, work, money, physical, emotional, spiritual health. What do you want? So that's step one. Step two, you gotta get your brain right. If your brain's not right, you're not right. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you do anything else um, with a healthy brain, you're happier, you're healthier, you're wealthier, you're more successful. Why? Because you make better decisions. Ultimately, it's the quality of your decisions moment by moment over time that determine your happiness, your health your wealth and your success. Over the years, I've been able to boil down brain health into this very simple phrase. If you wanna keep your brain healthy or rescue it if it's headed to the dark place, you have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors that steal your mind. Blood flow is just critical. The number one brain imaging predictor of Alzheimer's disease is low blood flow. And basically it comes down to this question. Is it good for my brain or bad for it? And if you can answer that question with information and love, love of yourself, love of your family, love of your mission, you do the right things. Step three is you have to know your brain type. Everybody's got a different brain. Um, and I've had two and a half million people take our online questionnaire. It's called our brain health assessment, brainhealthassessment.com. And you'll know, are you a balanced brain type? Spontaneous, that's really my ADD group, short attention span, distractibility, restlessness, impulse control. It's important to get it treated. It doesn't necessarily mean medicine, but medicine for some people is life-changing. Um, but you know, I have strategies for each of these types. The persistent people are the OCD people. And if you have ADD, I watched the chat, a couple of people go ADD and creative, and that is absolutely true. The sleepier your frontal lobes, the more outside of the box thinker you are, but don't hire the ADD person to be your executive assistant. They will make you crazy. Uh, you hire the persistent people and the cautious people to be your assistant because they will follow through on what you need to get done. The sensitive types are our empathic, our empath 
uh, people, um, but they can struggle sometimes with negative thoughts. The cautious people are anxious, but if you know your type, you can then take the supplements or sometimes medication to help balance your brain. Um, step four, if you wanna lock up the distractions. And I love this quote. The best way to reduce stress in your life is to stop screwing up. And how do you make better decisions? Uh, well, you know your motivation. You put those words up. You have to have a stable blood sugar, which means you need to eat to stay focused. Uh, I love this study they did at Emory University where they took 107 married couples, tested their blood sugar at the end of the day, and then gave them voodoo dolls. And they asked them to express their feelings about their partner with the pins in the dolls. And the people who had the lowest blood sugar levels had more than twice the number of pins in the dolls. So if you get hangry, that eating protein and healthy fat at every meal helps to balance your blood sugar and your attention and helps to protect your loved ones from your hangriness. Seven to eight hours of sleep. Sleep is absolutely essential. Little to no alcohol. I'm not a fan of alcohol. Uh, ever since I started looking at the brain in 1991, and I saw the damage it did to scans, I have been railing against it. And uh, it's not gotten me a lot of fans. Healthy vitamin D and omega-3 fatty acids. All of you on this call, you should go to the lab and get your vitamin D and omega-3 index taken. I actually think most people should be taking 5,000 international units of vitamin D a day and 2,000 units of omega-3 fatty acids. But you got to get your nutrients right. You also want to avoid trigger foods that steal blood flow to your brain. Did you know that gluten decreases blood flow? to the brain. It gives you brain fog and dairy and sensitive people as well. Surround yourself with like-minded people. People are contagious like COVID. Uh, and if you're around people that are constantly poking and distracting you, you need to put your phone on airplane mode. So dopamine is made deep in the brain in an area called the VTA or ventral tegmental area, also an area called the substantia nigra. It works in this very interesting area called the striatum. And uh, this is, think of it as the pleasure center in the brain and it activates your frontal lobes. So dopamine has two pathways. One, it helps you feel awesome but it also helps you focus. And so you never wanna wear out your dopamine neuron. Let me help you grow your brain and tame the hidden dragons that control your happiness, habits, and hangups. So I prepare to talk for you it's based on my new book, Your Brain is Always Listening. People ask me why the dragons in this book. Uh, if you read my books, I've always got something going on, whether it's an anteater to kill the ants that we talked about last time, the automatic negative thoughts, seahorses that represent your hippocampus in the brain. But uh, today we're going to talk about dragons. Uh, Tolkien, one of my favorite authors ever, said it's just simply not an adventure worth telling if there aren't any dragons. Um, I'm so excited for many of us. We're beginning to come out of the pandemic. Uh, I actually remember when it started for me, I had just published my book, The End of Mental Illness, and was on a book tour that got canceled March 10th. 
2020. And I remember that night, I wrote down this phrase, mental hygiene is just as important as washing your hands, that we need to disinfect our thoughts and tame the dragons that drive anxiety, depression, addiction, stress, and bad habits. And I believed, and it's absolutely come true, that COVID-19 would spawn a mental health pandemic, which it absolutely did. Depression tripled just from February of 2020 to August of 2020. Um, and so here is one of our cool little animations about the dragons breathing fire on your emotional brain and ruining your life. Quick story. Um, he's actually the opening story in the book. Uh, Jimmy was actually the son of the leader of the Mexican mafia in Los Angeles. And he's a high level business executive. The day I met him, which was Halloween uh, 2019, um, he had just been released from the hospital after feeling suicidal. <clears throat> He had severe panic attacks, uh, anxiety, dread. Whenever he was asked to speak in public, if I had to describe the fear, he said, it's like you're on death row and the clocks run out and the guard opens the door and you must take the first step. That kind of fear runs through my bones. This is a quote from my first session with him. He had glossophobia which is the fear of public speaking since he was 12 years old, when his grandmother asked him to make an impact statement for his father who was on trial for double murder. Um, his father actually went on to write a best-selling book uh, about the gangs in LA um, and still is in jail. Um, what if I cannot speak and end up killing my dad was the thought he had. His brain was filled with what we call automatic negative thoughts or the thoughts that just come into your mind automatically and ruin your day. And ants tend to stack, link with each other, and then they attack you. And so this was his ant trail. I can't speak in public, so I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to be afraid of interviewing, so I won't be able to get a new job. I'm a loser. My wife will divorce me. I'll end up on the streets. I should kill myself. Thoughts, you should write this down. Thoughts create feelings. Feelings create behaviors. Behaviors create outcomes. So if you really want to help someone, you want to make sure they get their thoughts to help them rather than to hurt them. Um, he, when you look at this poor kid's uh, past, he had intense persistent trauma. He watched his dad deal drugs and assault others. When he was eight, SWAT officers broke his apartment door down with guns drawn. Uh, when visiting his dad in prison, his dad made him go up to other gang leaders. Uh, it was very scary for him to test his mettle. It's a, a common theme throughout our therapy. Um, he witnessed drive-by shootings, was in car chases before the age of nine. He'd been kidnapped twice by feuding family members. His mother kept his siblings but she sent him to live with his grandparents. So you can see where the abandoned dragon comes in. He witnessed his grandmother being raped. And then the rapist asked if he wanted to participate. Imagine how that will mess with your mind. He had ancestral dragons. Uh, both sides were loaded with anxiety, depression, <clears throat> drug abuse, and he had bad habit dragons. He actually loved watching violent movies, uh, boxing, UFC fights. Um, 
execution and animal fights based on something called the arousal template. If you want to know where fetishes start, the arousal template is where were you when you were first aroused. It's often so intense that it triggers uh, an addiction. Um, there's always brain influences. I think that's what I'm most known for in the world is the brain imaging work we do. He had head injuries playing football. He boxed in high school. When he was 15, he fell eight feet onto his head, was unconscious, lost his hearing, had to learn to walk again. He'd used drugs and alcohol as a teenager. Whenever we think of people at Amen Clinics, I have nine, soon to be 10 clinics uh, around the country, but we always think of our patients in these four big circles. You know, what's going on with your brain, with your mind, with your relationships and with your soul, which is why do you care? What's your deepest sense of meaning and purpose? And part of what we do is we scan people. We do a study called SPECT that looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how the brain works. Example of a healthy scan, Jimmy had damage to his left temporal lobe, probably from the repetitive head injuries he had. And his emotional brain was just on fire, uh, probably because of the intense trauma he had. He had an ACE score at first childhood experiences. It's on a scale of zero to 10. Um, people who have a score of four or more uh, die on average 20 years earlier than people who are under four. Uh, he has a score of eight. Uh, and hypervigilance just sort of got stuck in his brain. So, but with treatment, he thrived diligent dragon and ant taming, uh, medication for his left temporal lobe, supplements uh, for his brain. We make something called Happy Saffron uh, and Brain and Body Power Max. His mood stabilizes anxiety lesson, better husband, team member, lost weight. It was very common for our patients if they're overweight, stronger, more energy. And he started to help his family get well get it, give it away, keep it forever. You have to share what you learn in order to really solidify it in your soul. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.